everyone. Happy Monday. Firstly, I want to start uh, by saying thank you all for devoting your Monday to our VCTV. Um, I really appreciate the amount of time you uh, spend to speak on VCTV to share your insights. Some of them are new speakers and some of them are, you know, veteran sort of <laughs> speakers as one of them just mentioned before uh, we went live. So the whole point of VCTV, why we, why we come back every week is to connect investors like yourselves with the startup community that are looking for help. So in this time of crisis, you know, the startup community, the, the startups and the founders are the ones who are really badly hit because of the pandemic, because of the uncertainty. So this is the right time for us to come and help them out. And who better than better can do that other than people like yourself? Um, so, so that's the whole point. That's a bit of context for VCTV um, because you know people keep on asking, "What are you doing every week?" That's what I do every day. So my job is to host, moderate the session, make sure that all of you had a, have a great time besides sharing knowledge. And I, I, and I always urge you to make it very interactive and engaging session as well. So where speakers can network within each other as well at the same time. The viewers of the show are the startup community as, as I speak, and also the investors um, are tune, tuning in to our show today. So today, um, today topic is investments into medtech, biotech, and health tech. Obviously, these are three different sectors, and everybody over here are specializing in a particular sector. We have people from uh, VC firms, we have people from family offices, to share and also, you know, venture form, uh, venture arm of the family office uh, over here, right here. Today we have the new speaker from Singapore, and I would like to uh, ask her to introduce herself um, with a short intro about herself and the company she represents. Um, uh, hi, Marin. Welcome to VCTV. How are you today? Uh, very well. Hello to everybody wherever you are. My name is Marin of Schweitzer World. We are a family office and Schweitzer's uh, growth capital arm in Southeast Asia. We are backing uh, innovative companies uh, across various stages and sectors in Southeast Asia. So if you look at Schweitzer Group, um, our roots go back to 1849. So that's 171 years already. Uh, we are in Singapore since 1982. We are sixth generation family business and family office. We already did two IPOs uh, some time ago and our firm is structured in three verticals. One is electronics, what you see now in the background. The second one is mobility as well as digital. And today I'm here to share my insights about digital and our investment arm in Southeast Asia. Excellent. Thank you, Marin. We love your background. I was just talking to you before this, you know, it's, it's 3D, it's, it's mobile, <laughs> and, and obviously you invest into uh, uh, mobility, electronics, and digital, as you rightly said. We're going to hear more from you uh, as after the introduction. Um, so, Singapore, I would like to go next, India. So, we have three speakers, three VCs from India. Um, uh, so basically, uh, one of them is brand new. On, uh, I mean, obviously on my show, two, two speakers are new, but they're spoken in the US panel. So I'd like to start with them. Anuj, hi Anuj, welcome to VCTV Singapore. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you so much. Uh, pleasure to be here. I mean, uh, as you mentioned, being on the US panel. So pleasure being on the Singapore panel as well. Uh, introducing myself, I am the founder of Yellow Sapphire Technologies and Atutum. Uh, Atutum is one of India's first private concierge where we are launching a privatized healthcare services for chronic and critical care patients. We have done a soft launch and are now rapidly expanding with over 18 hospitals on board. We are now reaching out to the next level where we onboard as many users as we can, helping them out with AI and personalization engines, along with a human touch to make their lives better. Fantastic. You want to hear more about uh, the, more insights from you later. Thank you, Anuj, and welcome to BCTV. Next, I have Devan Mehta. Hi, Devan. Welcome to BCTV Singapore, like Asia. Yeah, hi. How are you? Hey, uh, I'm thank good. You. Very good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for organizing all this. Uh, I am Devan Mehta. I'm a partner at Antil Ventures, which is an early stage VC firm. Um, 
invest primarily at pre A and series A. And uh, along with that, I also am the founding member of Lumos Healthcare, which is our, our accelerator that works hand in glove with the investment arm. So we're essentially a fund accelerator and I manage the healthcare vertical. Uh, along with HCG, uh, India's biggest oncology chain and a few other partners, we run this accelerator. So we have a strong interest in anything to do with oncology, early stage detection, cures, immuno-oncology, genome sequencing uh, and adjacencies. And uh, I'm based out of Mumbai, India. We have presence uh, in Mumbai, Hyderabad and Singapore. Oh, Singapore as well. Good, good to know that, Devan. Welcome to VCT. We're gonna hear more insights from you later. Thank you Thank for that intro. So next I have, oh yeah, Thomas from Poland. Welcome to VCTV, Thomas. Firstly, are you freezing over there? Are you okay? Is it winters already? Yeah, perfect. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation for the, for this great event. And a few words about uh, about me and about Speedup. So I'm the managing partner in uh, Speedup Venture Capital Group. It's a group of uh, VC funds uh, based in Poznan, Poland. Um, so we are investing in uh, in actually every vertical that uh, can be a good opportunity for us to to invest in. Uh, we have um, quite a good track record in investing in medical devices, medical technologies. Um, so I believe this uh, this event will also um, help me to, to to find a new look at the health and the health tech market um, in the whole world. Thank you very much. Oh. Great, yeah, that's the whole point. You connect up with other investors who are actually investing into the same sector as you. Thank you and welcome. And last but not least, we have our special speaker who is always there. Uh, Luis, welcome back. Welcome back to VCTV Singapore. <laughs> Hi, Sonny, thank you. And I apologize for being a little late. Technical difficulties. Uh, let me give this skinny really quick on myself. I'm a, I'm a managing partner with FJ Partners. We're a private equity firm. We're focused on technology, AI, AR, VR. And all of that is, is uh, basically uh, tied into this topic today with uh, med tech, health tech, and uh, that, that, that arena. And I look forward to hearing from everyone on the panel and hopefully getting more information so that it can help the viewers and also help everyone on this panel to learn more about what everyone is doing and in the industry at large. Excellent. Thank you so much, Luis. Okay, uh, so Marin, uh, I would like to start uh, open the panel with you. So tell us, tell us, tell us, tell the speaker, the, tell our audience, sorry, um, excuse me, tell our audience, the startups who are watching us, so what's, what's the current trends in health tech, um, med tech and biotech? So what kind of investments are, get, are getting done into this space and what do you see are the trends and the future in this space? There's a lot out there and uh, well, COVID has certainly been an accelerator for health tech super apps. Uh, in, uh, in the recent months, all over Southeast Asia, let's say Indonesia, let's say Vietnam and the Philippines including Singapore for sure. So uh, what we see down there is that uh, the health tech uh, super apps, they manage very well to uh, uh, run in the next round and uh, uh, keep, keep growing. Growing on uh, from the perspective of users on the platform as well as uh, on the funding side. We just recently joined the Series C uh, of a health tech uh, super app in Southeast Asia. Okay, so you invest into projects in Singapore and Southeast Asia only or? It's Southeast Asia only. Uh, because we believe we need to understand the market environment and not uh, just believe like okay, let's go to the US, let's go see the King Valley and uh, uh, believe like we can do the same over there. So we are only focusing on Southeast Asia, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I'll come back to you with more questions. I just realized, uh, my apologies, Chinu, welcome back. It's just that the way I had framed my Zoom, you were not in the frame. So sorry, I missed out. Uh, Chinu, please welcome back to VCTV. <laughs> my apologies, I couldn't see no you. Problem. No problem, no <laughs> problem. So hi, uh, my name is Chinnu Santhal Kumar. I'm a general partner at Xfinity Ventures. Uh, we are focused on enterprise technology in India, as well as we invest in cross-border investments, US and India. 
and uh, we have invested quite a few investments in ai into like uh, different business verticals and uh, so we are actually actively looking to invest in healthcare and medtech uh, we have been looking at companies and uh, you know we have some ideas and thoughts around that i thought i'll share some and also learn some actually so that's that's my background i'd say thank you yeah chinu uh, just what quickly uh, so your portfolio companies and in, uh, your investments are only in india or outside of india as well so we we have uh, total we have invested 23 companies and out of them 20 are active and 10 are located uh, in us with teams in india so these are all cross border companies actually uh, right. so it will be like us hyderabad us bangalore us pune like that or us chennai and we have about 10 companies which are domiciled in india actually excellent so it's india and us primarily uh, correct, correct 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 okay thank you so much so marine just uh, okay introduced well her, herself with the portfolio companies next i'd like to ask anuj anuj yeah please tell us about the recent investments trends in the space so basically ask tell us first like which sector do you invest into we are primarily focusing upon health tech and fintech at the moment right now with yellow sapphire and with the tritum these are the two sector that we are actively looking at in terms of i would say the recent trends or the recent events that's happening in the sector one of the main key things that we are seeing right now is there is a huge explosion in terms of tele consultation but one thing which i still believe is lacking right now is taking that tele consultation forward but uh, when when you're talking about consulting with a doctor over the internet one of the key issues is that there is still connectivity issues in remote areas which still lack access to healthcare to give you an example uh, when it comes to india at this moment 70% of indian population has only access to 30% of the healthcare infrastructure so there is that vast gap between the population in a tier 1 city versus a tier 4 city and that's one of the main issues while there are a lot of startups that are coming in realizing that oh covid has given us a potential that we can go in and create a market for ourselves uh, create something of value one thing which is still lacking is in that attempt to go ahead and and uh, i i would say capture market we are forgetting that there is still an issue in terms of educating people about seeing a doctor uh, if if i may share example from another industry from fintech i would say when you launch a fintech product everyone's hoping to to get as many number of customers as you can to onboard customers uh with the example of a uh, pmj scheme they opened up n number of accounts for below poverty line people but those accounts are now empty no one is practically using them and that's because there is no financial inclusivity there is no education that's been provided as to what kind of service they can avail and what are the benefits of it same goes for healthcare as well companies are coming in booming up starting n number of products not realizing that there is still an issue about educating the user that you have to come up and actually see a doctor just by creating a product it does not solve anything until and unless there is outreach there is exposure to the audience and and you're actually uh, making sure that your customers are getting value out of it that's when you'll see the real market growth so that's the challenge in telemedicine space anuj that's what you just highlighted but that's from india context but generally if you speak about telemedicine it has picked up during the covid time right as well that telemedicine is not just in india that i'm i'm talking globally uh, right. in india of course i'm giving that as an example because we have 1.3 billion people but globally as well telemedicine is picking up but let's not forget telemedicine is still a consultation if i go and see a doctor while 60% of the cases can be solved by just an opd consultation by just a prescription let's not forget that there are other procedures the remaining 40% of the cases they still need some form of investigation they still need some form of, uh, of blood work or uh, some of some form of lab test some or an mri or anything and once that's done once that reports been generated sending that across over the internet to make sure that there is a tele radiologist on the other side to create that radiology report uh along with that if let's say there is actually some diagnosis coming out of it that still needs a procedure and for that a user still has to transfer so while we are focusing and while we are going ahead with the approach of let's boost up telemedicine that this telemedicine in itself is not the holy grail which the which the healthcare industry is making it to be 
Right, got it. So you invest into mainly startups in India or outside of India as well? So primarily, uh, we have started this as a new venture to enter into health tech sector as well. But other than that, in India, I've been working with Aeon Fund to help companies raise in, uh, investment. That's US funds coming into India and making these investments. That's where we have primarily been focusing upon fintech and health tech products. Excellent. Okay, Anush, thank you so much. I would uh, hear other perspectives from the speakers regarding telemedicine and the challenges that Anush just uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, Devang, can you please enlighten us with which sector you primarily invest into from these three areas? Right. So we uh, again we advise and invest, uh, but uh, the sectors of interest again on account of the way the accelerator and uh, by extension the fund is structured. The primary interest. Uh, uh, area of investment and advisory is cancer. It still remains the most lethal uh, disease worldwide. Obviously, in the interim, there's uh, a lot of focus on um, you know existing startups being able to pivot to COVID. So our current portfolio has done really well in that. In fact, there's a Singapore-based startup uh, that we have invested in, Chronic Air. Uh, the the company started off by doing chronic wound management, which basically you know measuring the parameters of a wound, length, breadth, height, color, and all that. But they quickly pivoted to, uh, uh, to build and market a temperature monitor, which is being widely used across Singapore uh, at senior centers, uh, dormitories, uh, bus terminals, and things like that. So I think with the existing portfolio, there's, uh, there's need either to increase the runway or to make sure that they pivot in time to address COVID. But uh, it, Oncology and uh, innovation areas around oncology still remain evergreen. Uh, these include uh, genome and genome sequencing, CRISPR in the near future. There's uh, immuno-oncology is a big area of innovation and uh, you know a lot of interesting startups coming out. And it's also driven by the fact that uh, big pharma in these areas at least largely intends to grow inorganically, right? So there's a lot of research which, so as to speak, is being outsourced to early stage companies and the winners are ex exiting with fantastic multiples. And then uh, there's uh, areas uh, around that. So, you know, for example, uh, our GSNCs could include uh, a specialized nutrition and food diet for cancer patients or even relatively non-tech areas like a company, for example, we spoke to the other day uh, sells wigs and prosthetic breasts at cancer centers. So it's it's just a play on expansion and good uh, good unit economics in the health tech space. So a lot of areas of innovation and uh, you know oncology to us uh, remains evergreen. So has this oncology industry or sector been affected due to, uh, due to COVID? Because obviously all the efforts are getting diverted and all the inattention is getting diverted to get probably, you know, as the, your startup pivoted from a wound management startup to, to a temperature measuring a measuring uh, startup. So right. do you think that has been affected because of the pandemic? Yeah, there's two ways to answer that. Obviously, it's not as easy as, as before March to go into a place and get chemo, right? You know, in fact, there's, there's fear of going into any medical center for contracting COVID. So for sure, uh, you know, I, it, it's hard. I mean, people with existing conditions are dealing with it somehow. I'm not frankly, 100% sure. So I think there's, but the areas of innovation, right? Uh, you know, scientists and researchers uh, doing research on a new molecule or drug that could uh, be a checkpoint inhibitor, that is largely unchanged. They just end up working completely remotely. But, uh, you know, as soon as things appear to be normal or become normal, those areas will continue to see rapid innovation and growth, yes. Absolutely, agree, agree. So we have COVID, then we have cancer as well. I mean, <laughs> double <Yeah>. Y. <laughs> Thank you, Devang, for uh, sharing those insights. Chinu, I, I remember last time you were you were share a lot of insights about your portfolio. Anything new you'd like to add today? So actually, you know, uh, we have been, like I said, we have been looking at this landscape. Um, I think, you know, the, our observation has been, and we have looked at quite a few port, uh, startups before COVID and after COVID. So I think if I look at it, you have actually nicely stacked up the topic, healthcare, sorry, health tech, med tech, and biotech, actually. I think the investments in Asia has been more on health tech, which is more digital oriented platform, actually. Because if you look at AI and ML disruption has been impacting all business verticals. It could be retail or it could be anything. 
and it is also impacting in the uh, you know medical the healthcare uh, healthcare tech also so we have come across several companies i have seen quite a few investments happening in asia i am kind of you know kind of expanding beyond india more like improving the productivity remote diagnostics and you know hospital management improvement so a lot of digitization and ai ml techniques you know using uh, diagnostic software to diagnose faster that's what has been the trend in asia and uh, if you look at europe and us they have been traditionally investing a lot in medtech and uh, biotech because the investment gestation cycles are longer for medtech and uh, biotech actually but even there the trend what i see is because of this ai and ml disruption even fdi i think you may have noticed or you may have read in the news fdi has come up with a fast tracking scheme for ai led devices actually so whatever you used to take lot, see one of the biggest issue in medical device investment or biotech is the regulatory time frame actually which used to scare away a lot of investors actually but i think with all this developments fdi F, sorry fda actually has come up with fast tracking scheme so there a lot of people are also thinking about investing in medtech actually this is the second trend i see it actually and i think you know uh, coming back to india uh, what anuj said i echo it the telehealth was happening that uh, but i think the covid expedited actually because i think not only in india i think all over the world the healthcare infrastructure has been challenged because of the covid and if you look at countries all over the world they did not put enough budget into uh, healthcare because you know all politicians they always thought like maybe 5 years is enough they never thought a pandemic like uh, covid actually so the whole healthcare infrastructure crumbled so i do see a lot of investment into healthcare itself because you know you want to make it affordable you want to increase the remote diagnostics and how you can quickly uh, diagnose uh, in situations like pandemic like that there will be a lot of investment into that and i think traditional thing um, you know medtech biotech will continue the other thing i may want to point out in biotech i actually i was in italy like about 2 years back and i met uh, the founder of beyond meat so he put an interesting perspective see if you look at it uh, india actually the, there is a malnutrition problem in india and many asian countries actually and uh, to give food with you know like uh, meat meat based protein is going to be tough for a very populated country like india and china so why not think about plant based protein actually so there are a lot of interesting things happening in biotech which may come to asia because i think the situation is different because if you look at in us and europe they want to become uh, they want to adopt vegan style but so because of that they want to go for um, beyond meat kind of thing actually but if you come to asia or india uh, you want to kind of make sure the malnutrition issues are addressed and the only way cost effective way to address is probably go for a plant based uh, protein actually so there are a lot of uh, thoughts are being you know circulated around that actually so it's an interesting space i am watching and looking how things are panning out and we will definitely invest most likely in the healthcare tech we have been looking at some companies in this space uh, awesome fantastic i really like the way you mentioned like government were not taking <laughs> care of this uh, this space until a pandemic like that this right. sort on this you know scale hit us right so i think i think governments in all over the all over the world should be thinking about building sustainable healthcare systems i mean i mean this year 2020 we had covid 19 who knows what we face in the coming years right exactly exactly it's very key I'd for like, i'm sorry i'd like to jump in here so if you look at health tech yes i can confirm there's a lot of activity in health tech but if you only think about offerings about teleconsultation i don't believe this is a sustainable business model why because uh, we believe you need two things one is you need to establish a rundle and two you need to own the rails what is that the rundle is that uh, you manage to bundle various offerings maybe including insurance offerings uh so having on your teleconsultation platform insurance companies uh, that cross sell their products on your app including payment uh and uh, that's a bundle so an important point of view uh, from our from our perspective is that you need to transfer this bundle into a rundle so a recurrent revenue model 
kind of subscription. Just imagine Amazon Prime. We all know it. Yeah. Uh, it's for a couple of dollars or Singapore dollars or euros, wherever you are in the world. And you, uh, you buy into that subscription. Most users, they even forget that they have it, but they like it. That's a rumble then. So that's one. Secondly, uh, we believe uh, health tech needs to own the rails. What do, we, what do I want to say with that? Owning the rails means uh, that you have a certain influence on distribution. So let's just look at Apple. Apple owns the rails because they are selling their uh, hardware, iPhones, iPad, or other devices, and then automatically certain apps come with it. So if you just compare Apple Music with Spotify, for example, there is a clear advantage that Apple owns the rails. So if we transfer that to health tech, I think it's important that health tech uh, ecosystems, they manage to also own the rails. So that can be done via corporations, partnerships with hospitals and clinics that might be done with insurances, that these rails are actually part of the ecosystem and cannot be taken away by competition. So it's the two things, the rumble and owning the rails, which is important to have a USP down the road from, uh, from our perspective. Very good point. I totally agree. Insurance is a big aspect and very much attached to healthcare and fintech, obviously payments. They're all like part of the ecosystem. Thank you so much, Marin, uh, for adding those insights into uh, our panel. So Thomas, I'd like to ask what's happening in Europe? I mean, firstly, which, which region do you invest into? What stage of startup and what's happening in Europe? So we are investing actually in the whole Europe. So and we are investing from uh, 200k euro till 5 million euro. Uh, so, so we have quite a broad uh, spectrum of investment that you can make. And uh, looking at uh, our deal flow and basically on our experience, what, what I can say with what is happening in these free markets is that uh, so we can uh, we can see rise of, of um, the three, four big categories that are that, 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 that is happening right now. So the first is um, uh, connected with healthcare, but a bit before in the in the whole process. I mean, uh, it's a fitness and nutrition apps. So uh, any any technologies that that can help you stay healthy, uh, so you don't need to actually go to the healthcare market. Um, so, so we can see a lot of apps. We can see a lot of technologies that can help you stay stay healthier. Uh, do it, uh, do it at uh, do it at home, and um, yeah. So, so, so this is the first area. The second one is um, is um, anything. So, any technology connected uh, connected with uh, sim simplifying the contact with the doctors, reducing the, this contact, and uh, somehow replacing the, the some kind of some some part of process. Um, uh, uh, during the diagnosis of, of illness, uh, and here in this bucket, we can uh, we can have all the AI machine learning technologies uh, that can actually put the diagnosis uh, before the doctor can uh, can do that. Uh, so, the, so this is it. The, the third, uh, the third area that we can see is a rise up of uh, technologies that are actually prepared for the countries where there is not. Um, the common uh, access to uh, to the healthcare, uh, like like countries in, in Africa, for example, uh, and the fourth one is um, improving uh, processes uh, mainly connected with clinical clinical trials uh, for big pharma. So um, as I can see, our our deal flow and our uh, and the projects that are coming to us, these are the four main areas that are connecting connecting with us to invest in in, in such companies. Yeah, great. You've broken down in four areas. So any recent investments in these four areas in the last uh, eight months, six to eight months? So actually we have an um, uh, exit like uh, last month in the nutrition area. Uh, we, we had the investments like two years ago in, uh, in a technology that um, um, using VR headset helps to, 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 to uh, cure the lazy eye and, and, and uh, how is it called? Um, so lazy eye uh, symptoms for the, for the kids. Uh, and uh, also in our portfolio, we have Statomi, which is AI uh, for, for doctors to, um, to diagnose um, 
the symptoms of asthma for children. Wow, what's using VR to treat lazy eye for children? What, what's, what's, what's that? I'm a little intrigued. Yeah, so you can, you can say this This is called Remed Vision, Remed VR. Um, this company is actually going to to, to uh, get into the Indian market as far as I believe in the next year. So so maybe you will be also the beneficiary of, of the technology. Um, this is the technology that is using the games for the kids, uh, which have uh, problems with, with their eyes, with uh, mostly with lazy eye. Uh, yeah, and we can actually um, shorten the, the whole process of, of curing a child from 18 months to six. Oh, wow, that's cool. And second was, did you, did you say asthma? Yeah, so, so this is Statomy, which is actually the AI-driven um, AI stethoscope uh, for MDs, which was um, uh, broadly used now uh, during the COVID, uh, uh, COVID times. But actually, we are now uh, mostly focusing on asthma market because we can see that our, our algorithms that, um, that are diagnosing um, the asthma can be, can be the best used in this area, mostly or also for children. Excellent, excellent. That's a big area of concern when it comes it to is. sugar. It Thank is. you so much. Thank you so much, Thomas. Okay, uh, last uh, but not least, Luis, your insights, please, from the US. Yeah, we, we, we're involved in, as I said, AI, AR, VR, and I just want to touch on a few things. Um, someone was talking about connectivity in, in India and you have the same problem in Africa and with 5G coming out, we're going from a two lane to a 10 lane. I talk about it all the time. This is going to solve all those problems. It's going to give people access to these platforms and healthcare, health technology when it's in itself is, is everything is medical tech is bio is everything. So people have to look at it as, as one big one, one big area and you just break it down in, in, into other areas, you know, like in, in um, like robotics, artificial intelligence, this is going to be very important as you move forward. As far as the connectivity, as, as we go into 5G, all of this is going to become very important. You're going to have uh, remote surgeries. It's going, it's happening now. It's going to happen more so. Okay. You know, using, utilizing robots, virtual reality, this is going to be part of the, our future. Okay, people look at what happened with the pandemic as being a, uh, a temporary change. No, it's a permanent change. It's gonna, it, it, it left an indelible mark on everyone and our lives are gonna change and technology will help to enhance that. You know, in health tech, you know, w someone was mentioning about telemedicine. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it, it's important. Access to, you know, uh, mobile mobile uh, you know, technology. Uh, what is it, the uh, M-Health they call it, okay? You have access to all your records where doctors and the patients they have access to their records on the go. This is, a, is an important part of telemedicine because if you don't have access to the information, how are you going to diagnose? How are you going to do this stuff? And you, you're talking about also, uh, as you know, someone was mentioning about Apple and their ecosystem. You know, we we also have devices that are that are, that that can actually monitor things in our body from from our our uh, our breathing to our our heart rate and so on and so forth. So all of this is still enhancing, okay? And the, the telemedicine, you know, with without. The, the information for the patient, it's not going to be so helpful. You, you can't diagnose if you don't know what's going on with the actual individual. So those, those uh, the remote monitoring tools are, are going to be important as well, because, you know, then if you can go and um, have access to individualized, you know, have, have an individualized situation for, for someone where you can uh, bring forth new, 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 new things for them, for the arena. You know, there, there are a lot of things and I really can't get into everything. There's not going to be enough time, but I, I do want to say that the advances are there. Okay. The medicines, devices, vaccine systems, and, and procedures, all of this stuff is going to, is going to come to, to a head, to a head. Uh, with telemedicine, one thing that I need to say is security and privacy is paramount. And this is what people need to actually focus on. And someone mentioned about education. I agree a thousand percent. If you don't teach people how to use it or why they're using it, why are they going to use it? 
you teach them, you lead them to water, they're either going to drink it or not. But if you if you show them how to drink it, you know, they'll drink it a little more. And that's going to be important moving forward. So you have a lot of moving parts, a lot of tentacles that are going to take place. And we're we're, we're at the infancy of this this um, the, this this change, this inflection point, because, we, you know, when you're talking about health technology, we're not going down, we're advancing. So there's going to be a lot of smart people creating these platforms, these portals, these, these devices that are going to help to enhance life. If you look at replacement surgery, knee, hip replacement, when it first happened, it was horrible. You had a lot of issues. You had you, some, some people were getting the blood poisons because of the metals and everything else. And this has changed. Now they, they perfected it. OK, and we're, we're going through that 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 Cambrian effect as well in, in regards to um, um, medical devices, medical technology. And we're going to get there. It's going to take some time, bumps in the road. There will be failures, but you'll have some smart people creating things for our future. So, I, again, I don't want to take up too much time, but I just want to try to get all that in. Thank you, Louis. You summarized, summarized it. Sorry, summarized it very nicely. But we like to hear from you more in our forthcoming sessions. So yeah, uh, so as, it, as everybody rightly said, it's the technology. With the telemedicine, the challenge is technology, the, the, the speed of connectivity. The education, as Luis said, is the, you know, the security aspect as well, the privacy aspect as well. Uh, we are still in the state of infancy, right? So there are a lot of challenges uh, in this space, if I understand correctly from all our speakers. I've lost somebody, have I? Okay, okay, so thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, I just want to know from Marin. Marin what has changed in terms of investment strategy uh, in this year, like starting from March 2020 up until now, what has changed uh, in, in, the, in the way investments are being done? And what is your best advice to founders who are looking to raise funds in these three sectors? Actually, uh, I believe uh, the investment community has been kind of uh, shock frozen to a certain extent uh, uh, when COVID emerged and we had a lot of lockdowns here in Singapore we call it circuit breaker which yeah. is pretty much a lockdown uh, it's just another word it maybe it's it's uh, it's more tasty than a lockdown so having said that uh, on our investment strategy side nothing has changed we are still looking at the same targets uh, we are still doing the same evaluations we are focusing a lot on getting to know uh, the team, the founders, and the extended management team at a very early stage. So we don't dig too much into data and look into pitch decks or info memos. We just write off want to know who's behind it, who can sell it. Because we believe to be successful, you also need to be a visionary storyteller in a startup. But one thing for sure, has changed and that's the advice uh, for for all founders it's all about runway so we've been helping uh, and jumping in with our industry expertise and that's what we do it's not only about money it's actually about our corporate expertise uh, from various sectors which is uh, kind of 171 years old so we had a lot of crisis actually so we get used to it you know uh, we had World War One, we had World War II, uh, we had uh, all the financial crises. Uh, we even had a fire in Germany, which burned down nearly everything. So uh, we got used to that. That helps a lot because it's giving resilience. So my point is, it's all about runway. So my advice to everybody is plan on sufficient runway. And sufficient runway is at least until end of 2021 from our perspective and our advice. So you need to have enough cash to sustain your business until end of 2021. And please also expect a changed demand on uh, your consumer side, which might be a lot lower. So you need to resize potentially your business to be sustainable post assistance, post COVID. So uh, we've been jumping in a lot uh, to assist uh, startups to ensure that runaway. Excellent, Marin. I really like those, appreciate those points. It's about people. Who's the brains behind the project? That's number one. Again, cash. 
always cash runway. And you rightly said, end of 2021, I really agreed to that as well. So, and build a sustainable business. So these are the key uh, key points. Startups who are watching Moraine today, um, she invests into companies uh, in Singapore and Southeast Asia. And um, she represents a VC and a family office. So these are the key uh, points for you to consider if you are going to be pitching to her. Uh, so thank you, Maren. Thanks for that. Uh, maybe, maybe, one, maybe one more that just came into my mind. I didn't share it before. So one thing I think is important that's more internally uh, in, in our portfolio companies and for all entrepreneurs, try to be straightforward to your team. I know that's so difficult because if you've been juggling with money and now it's getting even more difficult and maybe you even have to, to face a, a down round, which is not fun, uh, be frank and always tell what's really on the table, even if it's bad news, one. Secondly, internally, uh, I would want to give the advice, in times of crisis, please over communicate. Mm. Spend more time on communicating with your teams. Uh, and maybe you want also to always ask the same question. Uh, we call it phone tree. Just call everybody and the entire management team is always asking the same questions and then you get and get a good feeling uh, about where your organization is heading to. Mm. Never, ever, never, ever, and that's valid for all crises, including crisis which is affecting your brand, downplay what is happening to you. Don't downplay. Even though it might be very tough to tell your team, you know, now we have to do A, B, C, D, maybe you have to cut down costs, we also have to think about uh, retrenchment, or we all do salary cuts. Yes, that's difficult, but go out with it. Don't wait and uh, tell everybody what your, where your company is really heading to. So that's about straightforward communication, which is helping uh, to keep trust through difficult times. Absolutely, trust always always in any, any, any situation, bait crisis or not. And communication is always the key and transparency. Very, very well put, uh, Maren, thank you so much. I'd like to ask Anuj, uh, from your perspective, uh, since March till now, um, what has changed in investment from, from your perspective and what are you going to advise the um, founders who are looking to raise funds? What I see is changing is uh, now entrepreneurs are realizing that they have to do better than just technology. Uh, most of the entrepreneurs, most of the startup founders are engineers. I have been an engineer myself as well. And I, 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 I would say I, I agree to this as well when I say as engineers, we tend to fall in love with technology. We, we tend to think that, oh my God, developing technology is the holy grail. Uh, by by creating X product, I can solve Y, Z, w and, and N number of problems. But that's not always the situation. Now, that is where the come to God moment where, where after startups have worked so hard over the last six months when they have developed product, even before it, they, they, are now, they are now coming to that realization that once that technology has been made, once it's deployed on the internet and once you have started the whole marketing budget, what comes next? How do you actually reach out to people? How do you actually get users when you are not allowed to go speak to any of them? So that's that's one thing which is coming up as a realization, in my opinion, which is probably going to change the startup industry for better. Uh, they, in the past, we have seen a lot of issues where just getting that VC money was enough for a founder, Just just getting that X hundred uh, X million dollars of, of check was considered to be the mark of success that, all right, now that I have it, I'm going to use this money and I'm going to go all out on my marketing budget. That is where I see things are changing now. That's where people are actually coming to realization that you actually have to connect with the audience. You actually have to connect the relatability and you actually have to show the user that, hey, there is a product and there is a product you did not know you need which we are offering. That, that I see as a major change coming up in the industry next. Great, great. So it's not more only about technology. And I'm an engineer as well. 
See, as, as, at the end of the day, when you're starting up, when, when you're creating a startup, you have to tell the user that, hey, you have a need that you probably don't even realize by now. You, because everyone is working a certain way. Everyone has one way or the other to search for something or to, to get something done. If you're coming up a way that's making their life better, that's making something innovative, that's making something, I, I would say, next level, a user does not realize that need right now. They they have to come to that realization when only when you tell them. Right, great. So startups are looking to connect with Anuj after this session. Please listen carefully to what he has to say. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Anuj, for that. Uh, next, Devang. So so the same question as per as per you, what, what has changed in the investment since March up until now? And what advice do you have, have to get, offer the startups are looking to raise? Yeah, I mean, obviously COVID uh, has changed things. It's the new normal. So, uh, you know, I mean, in health tech, uh, I mean, in general, in general in the startup world, if there's any startup that is uh, predicated on people congregating, <laughs> it's not a good idea to raise yeah. money or funds, obviously. It's, it's not the right time to start a business. Let's say that's predicated on people traveling to a place or meeting for a for whatever reason. So, I mean, that's a, obviously a very generic statement, but in health tech, I think you have to be, you have to have a plan B for the next few months. You know, if you're, if you're doing something that requires people to come in for a test or, uh, you know, drives or whatever, you know, those things are going to get offset and pushed back. But in the mid and long term, I don't think, again, the, things have changed that much. You know, we, once, uh, once there will be cures or vaccines or whatever, and we slowly limp back to normal, we'll go back to thinking about diseases that uh, affect us and are not, and are either not cured or still intractable. In the Indian context, diabetes is always cancer, certain kinds of cancer. There's asthma, someone spoke about. Those have not gone anywhere due to COVID. You know, I mean, I think if at all what COVID has done is that it has evangelized a lot of people globally to think a lot more about health, <clears throat> excuse me, health, hygiene, about well-being, about having a strong immune system, being able to preempt disease, to be able to catch disease early and get it treated. I think that mentality will carry over even post COVID. So it actually opens up a lot more opportunities where if you can help people build an immune system, uh, get detected early for any disease, communicate that information through telemedicine or otherwise to doctors and healthcare providers and uh, weave that all into the healthcare system through either government funded programs or insurance and uh, interlink with IOT and timely uh, information, all that will continue to see tremendous growth uh, in the middle and long term. So I think if you are able to latch on to one of these rising trends and uh, exhibit the same startup trends, which is to build out a good team and execute uh, well, I think you, you, you will see a lot of investor interest in the upcoming months. Excellent, Devon. Thank you so much for um, sharing those insights. Uh, so startups, founders who want to connect with Devang later on after this show, please play back, listen to what he's got to say and focus on those points before you go and pitch. Thank you, Devang, so much uh, for your insights. Uh, next, I'd like to ask Chinu. Chinu, I mean, we always, I always hear great things from you. So what's, what's, what has changed in terms of investments as per your perspectives? So thank you. And I think uh, both uh, Meher, Anuj, and others have a call uh, in terms of keeping the runway, making sure you have to have a lean and mean. So I'll not repeat that. So I think, you know, if I look at health tech, med tech, and biotech, I think the health tech and med tech definitely has been back into the attention or getting more attention because of COVID. I think that's for sure. And I know some of my friends in VC community, they have missed it during this time. Along with cybersecurity, this is one area which will get traction actually. So there'll be more investments. I think, you know, like, um, you know, like Devang said that COVID has evangelized the need for health tech actually. So the second thing actually for um, entrepreneurs, I always keep saying that look for the unit economics actually. That's very, very important when you develop any product. It's not just in health tech or med tech. It's very important you look at the unit economics. And I think this is more, uh, you know, like uh, more so in the, post-COVID actually, because I think funding is happening. It is not dried up completely. 
country. In fact, maybe the funding is shifting from maybe from B2C to other sectors. That's the way I look at it actually, because I talk to some of my friends in Silicon Valley. They say that funding is happening as if like nothing has changed in Silicon Valley. So I think it is going to shift from B2C, other areas, maybe the travel, hospitality, those areas to probably B2B and hospitality, sorry, the, uh, you know, health tech, med tech like that. That is for it. So funding is going to happen. I don't know how big that we have to wait and watch. It is not frozen. And if you are have, if you have a startup, it is probably a good time, you know, if you're in a health tech and star, med tech actually. But I think there'll be more investment will happen in Asia, especially in the health tech and, and med tech actually. Because, uh, you know, like uh, the, the, everything is getting platformized. Like I said earlier, AI and machine learning is transforming a lot of uh, the, the pharma chain, med chain, like that. So you will see more investments into that. And I think it, it helps when somebody doesn't want to visit the hospital, doesn't want to travel. So use remote diagnostics. So you'll see a lot of investments into health tech. And even insurance, I think some of the speaker have mentioned about that. There is a talk about P2P, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer insurance, actually. So you group similar set of people and reduce the insurance premium. So you group similar age group, similar health conditions. And also people are talking about like uh, bite insurance. Like for an example, if I'm, a, if I'm into cycling, then I get more insurance for my activity related. So there are a lot of interesting trends happening because of the digitization, actually. So this, this is what my, my uh, take on it, actually. The P2P insurance sounds very interesting and I'd love to know more about peer to, it. Peer to peer, actually. Yeah, peer to peer. Yeah, I mean, that's something something new for me. I'd like to know more about it. Probably the, the timing of the show is not very appropriate. Either we can break it up into another session or we can take it offline, but you know, but if somebody wants to pitch and, and connect with you as a founder, so what are the, what are the what's the main three points you, you would like them to focus on? So I, I think, you know, we have not changed a lot because of COVID, because in B2B, the, the, we are very capital efficient, unlike B2B-C. So I would go with the same thing. I look at the founder, I look at the unit economics, I look at how much money they're raising, how they are going to utilize, what is the GTM partner. These are the four or five things I look at it. So from my point of view, nothing has changed, actually. I look at the market condition that is part of our analysis. But someone comes to pitch to me or to our fund, I look at these four or five things, actually. Excellent. Thank you, Chinu. I made things very simple. So founders and startups are looking to pitch and connect with Chinu. Please make sure you watch this show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thomas, over to you. So, so what has changed in Europe? I mean, from your perspectives? So, so um, not really so much. So um, uh, as far as I believe, uh, maybe some, some startups had some problems during the COVID times. Maybe the liquidity on the market was not so good as, as, as it was before. But, um, okay, I can actually repeat all the, all the, all the things that uh, the previous speakers uh, has told. But uh, what I would uh, focus on is, um, uh, once again, uh, free areas so, so, or, or free topics. So firstly, um, I, can, I can also emphasize that uh, the teams should do their job. So um, they should take the, the current situation into, into the consideration and maybe update their, their long-term uh, long strategy. But still, they should always keep in mind their strategy, their big picture and their, uh, their target. So, so th this, is, this is the first thing. The, the other one is that um, uh, as far as I can see, uh, so we have done several investments during the COVID times and in, uh, in our portfolio companies and also in the new companies. And what I can say uh, is that good teams always will find money. So uh, no matter what is the situation of the market, uh, the people have money and they can spend it uh, on your project. So uh, if you have a really good project and uh, you have an out outstanding team, you will find the money on the market. Maybe it will take a little bit longer. Maybe the access will not be um, so, so easy as it was before. Uh, maybe the valuation will not be as high as it as, as you imagined, um, or maybe there will be a down round. But still, there is a lot of money on the market. People need to utilize, utilize it somehow. So if you are good, if your project is good, then no worries, you will find the money. Um, and the third, and the third thing uh, is that um, every team and every project should be aware that there are a lot of people in their surroundings that can help them. 
it can be their clients, it can be their suppliers, it can be their investors. So don't hesitate to ask your suppliers for longer term. Uh, don't ask your clients maybe to uh, pay for next 12 months of, of your service. Because actually it's happening. We can see in our portfolio that many startups just asked for help uh, in their surroundings. And even in this uh, pandemic times, they got this help um, uh, from the market. So there are a lot of good people in your surroundings, don't hesitate uh, to ask for help. Some very great points, uh, Thomas. Let me summarize. So it's, it's a strategy, the big picture. There's the team behind the product and the company. And last but not least, always seek help. Suppliers, yep. clients, investors. There are, some, there, there are good people willing to help during this time of crisis. Really summed up nicely. Thomas, if somebody wants to, a startup founder in Europe wants to pitch their big idea uh, to you. So what is the one key point you would first like to highlight out of these three? Just always, the team. always the team. Always the team, wow. Always the team. I love that emphasis on like always the team, the people. Thank you so much. So startups, please make sure <laughs> before you pitch uh, Thomas. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, Luis, I would like to know your insights about uh, the same. Uh, well, I'll echo with what everyone else said. Um, I think things change somewhat. We've always invested in people, okay? People before anything, because this is the important thing. You get good people that have great ideas, and if you do it the right way, you can make some magic. The thing is, uh, someone mentioned about being an engineer, how you want to change the world, and you're doing that. The problem is, is that you do that, and if you, you don't have the business mind, you can do this, but you can't bring it to market. You can do this, but you can't open up the doors. You can do this, and it may be the best thing since sliced bread, but you cannot go and get any legs underneath it. This is why I do urge entrepreneurs, if you, if you are an engineer, if you're that type of person and you are the, you have the creative soul to make it happen, but you don't know how to bring it to market, get someone that does or connect with some, if you're looking for an investor that's going to do it, get an investor that is going to get their hands dirty and get involved in what you're doing. Not a passive one, because if you have, anyone can go and take daddy's check and throw it at you, but if they're not helping you to grow the business, what does that mean? You can't bring it to life. You need to be able to bring it to life. So you need the, the experience. You need the, the people that can go and bring their connections, everything to the table to help you to bring that to life. Okay. There are a lot of smart people out there. A lot of great ideas where people quit because they don't have the other part of the equation uh, you know i heard apple mentioned a few times you look at steve jobs you look at you know uh, was you see how they did it you had the marketing the business acumen you had the creativity and that made the magic if you're able to do that you can make some magic and in this arena health technology there are a lot of opportunities and you can do that and again on our end we we always look at the people then we look at what they have and it has to be disruptive technology that's scalable if you you do that you can have a successful recipe but it has to be in the right area you know there's money out there as, as thomas said there's money out there you just need to go and find it and bring the right things to the table and your team has to be strong if your team isn't strong it's going to be problematic so try to work on that as well but bring good get good, good people surround surrounding you and you can be successful at it Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Luis uh, and Thomas. I said people. It's the strong people. And investor, it's, it's not only cutting a check, but bringing their connections, their network, their education to scale this. And again, that is technology, which is, which, you know, is able to scale as well. So there are many points. So people in US who are looking to reach out to Luis via us, please listen to what he's got to say. I need to say that we're, we're global. We're global. It's not the U, just the U.S. Awesome. We're global, okay? <laughs> awesome. That even makes it much more, you know, exciting for, for founders to reach out to you. So please, please note, Lewis is global. <laughs> That's why he's on the Asia panels, <laughs> to connect with the Asian startups. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So just conscious of the time, any burning question, any last question you have for your co-speaker? Anyone? Anybody? Please. Okay, I'll ask the question, you know, with 5G rolling out, where, do, where, where does everyone see their areas boosting or maybe not boosting? Anybody can talk about technology? Yes, I, know, I knew that. Engineer. I, I, I want to add on that, Lewis. I mean, uh, 
I, I would say while 5G is a great technology, it's still, in my opinion, five years, uh, it, it's, it's still five years too early to depend on it. Millimeter wave needs a lot of hardware. It needs a lot of infrastructure. There are telecom companies across the world in developing nations and developed nations. There's, there's telecom companies in US that are struggling right now and they're not deploying that kind of hardware in, in every location. They're still doing pilot phases of it. Even in India, we are seeing Vodafone struggling. So they, they are going to need a lot of deployment, a lot of capital infusion when it comes to 5G. While, of course, I, 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 I really hope it turns out to be wonderful, I, I think depending upon 5G or, or waiting for it to make an impact, it's just, uh, I, I would say, five years too early for it. Wow, five years is too early for it. Okay, thank you, Anuj. Anybody else? Devang, you've got something to add? No. I mean, no, not much more than what Anuj said, I think. Yes, it's going to take some time and experience and history shows uh, many new technologies take a little longer uh, for their go to market. But uh, I believe 5G is going to be in, an enabler for many industries. So besides ecosystems, we've been talking a lot today it's a driver for anything about mobility. So if you look at our electronics vertical and at our mobility vertical, it's definitely a need. Just imagine the connected cars uh, sharing information. And this then can again, like in health tech, be leveraged into insure tech uh, and into offerings, uh, which go into the direction of insurance on a used base uh, case. Uh, with all the analytics, with a risk modeling that is integrated, fully automated. For all that, you need 5G. You need 5G also for automated mobility. You need 5G for IoT uh, in the manufacturing landscape for many, many industries. So looking down the road, we do see a lot of investment cases in 5G because 5G is addressing multiple markets, multiple business models all over the world. But uh, as I think Anuj rightly mentioned about the challenges, so do you see that this is going to be like taking maybe more than five years? Do you agree with what Anuj has to say? So I, I'll take this or, or okay, I'm very yeah. shocked. Okay. I don't, so I, I, don't, I, I, don't yeah. I don't think so for sure. You need the infrastructure ready and it needs to be deployed and there will be, uh, there will be setbacks, but it will not take five, uh, five years. Uh, from our point of view, the technology is ready. Uh, the use cases are ready, the business models are already there, and uh, the investment cases are there. So this is going to be drivers that this is not going to be uh, a slow uh, development of 5G. And if you look what is happening in certain countries, there is already a lot of 5G out there because you need it. You need it for major government initiatives uh, and there's a big play for private public partnerships uh, as additional investment cases down the road. I don't think it'll take five years. In certain countries, it'll might, it might take five years. Uh, full technology adoption might take five years, uh, but we are going to be a lot faster in 5G because we need it. So I think the, I, I'll pick up the last statement what Amar said. Actually, it is going to vary from region to region because the 5G hinges on the fact that you are able to lay fiber between the towers actually. And I think if you look at in India, countries like India or maybe many other countries, so the laying out fiber in cities, is going to be a big problem. So the other thing is in rural area, even laying out fiber in rural areas. So the other alternative is come up with satellite. That's what uh, Elon Musk is talking about. You know, the star as you know, the star link and everything. So I think, you know, the way I look at it is, in US, Europe, probably the rollout will happen fast, even China, for sure. And I think the other countries probably will take longer than that. So the impact will be also taking time, actually. And uh, we have invested in one company, which is the autonomous vehicle. And uh, so if you look at the autonomous vehicle, uh, the positioning is more for like Japan market, for like US market in Europe. And I don't know about other countries in Asia, uh, China is there, you know, I'm clubbing it with other countries, but I think in, in Asia, it's not even being talked about. So I think, you know, the 5G rollout will definitely happen in 
Asia a little later, actually. That's why I look at it. Physical Great. limitations and also the companies, telecom companies have invested in 3G and 4G. They also need to make sure that they recover the investments, actually. And uh, so if you look at specifically the telecom companies in India, they are bleeding, actually. So they may not have money to invest in 5G. It may not be a technology problem. So it could be beyond technology problem, actually. Well, so Louis, you got very different perspectives from Marin um, uh, and uh, Chinu and uh, sorry, I just don't see, has, has he left? <laughs> okay, so yeah. Louis, did that answer your question? Yeah, it's good to get to get input from different sides of the equation. And I do believe that in, in certain countries, it'll be a slower rollout. In other countries, it's going to be quicker and we need it. This is the future of everything. This is the connectivity that we need. And as you have smart cities evolving, this is going to help the rural areas to actually get that connectivity. So it's just going to go boop, 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 boop. And they're going to figure out how to do it, especially with vehicles and everything as they're going. They're going to be bringing that connectivity to you as well. So it's going to be interesting. And it's going to be a fun ride. And I think a lot of technology is going to come out that's going to better our lives. Great we sense. hope. <laughs> yeah, we always hopeful positively. Thank you uh, so much. So that brings us to the end of the session. I mean, just six minutes over, but that's okay. I'm really into it. And we all are we're into it. So uh, before I close the session, I just want to ask Marin, who's just joined us for the first time. Marin, how, how would you describe your experience at, on DCTV today? And what's the feedback and what, what value has he added onto you today? We always like to share uh, what we experienced. Uh, I appreciated a lot of different perspective, uh, learnings from uh, different regions. Uh, I think uh, the, mix, the mix is uh, the different ingredients like, like cooking. You need different ingredients, seasoning, herbs, salt, pepper, to really uh, have a great dish. So I think we had a great dish today. I appreciate it a lot. And for all uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are out there and listening to us, uh, please keep in mind two things. One is default, uh, change is our default. I'm getting tired, Singapore time. Change is our default. We started with the clock business and uh, have electronics businesses, mobility and digital business today. The only thing that didn't change and what always mattered is our purpose. And for sure, 170 years ago, we didn't call it purpose, we just had it. It's that we want to make things better than they were yesterday. So if you like that, get in touch with us and then uh, we'll see if we can uh, cooperate together, and if you can uh, join the Schweitzer family. Thank you. Excellent, Marin. So startup, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Startups and founders, those who would like to reach out to Marin, please make sure change is a thing in your scope of work and many more other stuff besides that as well. Uh, next, I would like to ask uh, Thomas. Thomas, what's, uh, so, What's the, what's it because you also attended for the first time, what has been your experience on VCTV and what's the feedback and on the value that have added to you today? Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, one more time for the invitation. It was a pleasure to, to, to be a part of this event. Um, so actually, I love the different, uh, the different views uh, from many angles on the same topic. So, uh, so I have learned a lot about Indian and U.S. markets, uh, Asian and uh, U.S. market. Um, and what I can say, I hope that uh, I would be able to be a part of such events in the future. And maybe there will be an opportunity in the future to, to make a deal with you guys. Absolutely. That's the whole idea where you get to meet other investors and network with them as well. Thank you so much, Thomas, for being on the show and I hope to see you more on our show. Uh, thank, you. Devan, thank you. Devan, what's what's your take on VCTV? Uh, always a pleasure being here. Thank you. It's uh, Each event is interesting. You know, there's new panelists every time that, that even within health tech, there's so many subtopics. You know, you always learn from people with, uh, from different geographies, like I think, you know, specifically this event, um, 
I've not been uh, on with any other VC from Poland. So, you know, there's always something new to learn and something interesting to discover. And um, fabulous job. Thank you. Awesome, Devang. You can always reach out to Thomas and Thomas can always reach out to all of you after the show. Uh, just You just have to ping me. <laughs> you just have to let me know. Thank you so much, Devang. <clears throat> Thank you. Chinu. What's your take on VCTV? Great. Uh, I think I'll probably repeat, uh, but I think I'll repeat because it's important. I have to re-emphasize. I think the diversity of the speaker you bring into this platform is amazing because this is the second time I'm attending and uh, truly a global perspective starting from the United States to Europe to Asia. So that's, that's something I really love to join this platform. Second, the more and more I look at it, the VC community or even the investment community thinks very similar. You know, be it in Europe, the, the, if you look at, if you distill all the discussion, if you look at what they look for is, you know, uh, I think I think uh, one of the speakers said team. I would also put the team as the first because, you know, that is the main thing in startup investment, actually, for any anything to happen, actually. So, you know, globally, we all think the same way. That kind of is interesting to see how people may be located in different regions, but we all think alike, actually. And uh, third, actually, uh, uh, you know, very interesting session about the healthcare, so the health tech, ranging from health tech to med tech to biotech, uh, wide ranging of topics, but, you know, like it's an interesting uh, topic in today's context, especially in COVID, very right timing, actually. Great, great work. Thanks. Thank you, Chinu. I really, you know, I really will love to have you back because your insights are equally great. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank this you. feedback. Last but not least, our regular speaker, who is just global citizen as well, Luis. <laughs> uh, thanks, honey. Uh, VCTV is a great platform. It brings together panelists, as everyone said, from from a global, from globally, global perspective, and giving this insight is invaluable to people, to the viewers, to anyone that's watching the show, listening to the show, because they can learn from it. And then, uh, then, then Tomas. You know, Pazin, my favorite city in Poland, by the way. Um, but just the information that you get from everyone can be helpful. And I'm always willing to connect with any of the panelists, you know, uh, entrepreneurs that are out there. You can reach out to me. We may or may not do business, but at the very least, we can, you know, collaborate in some way and gain the knowledge and maybe help each other along the way. Because I'm always open for that because anything in life is about people. And I'm, I'm, I'm about connecting with people. But VCTV allows this to happen on a, again, on a global on a global scale, Sonny. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Luis. Very encourage, encouraging words for me, to be honest. The thing is, what Luis just said is very right. We, you, the thing is, startup founders who are watching us, you may not necessarily end up doing business with these investors, but the connection, the collaboration, the sharing of knowledge is equally very important and vital as well. That's why I'm saying you are able to pitch your idea, you're able to pitch your startup to these amazing brains uh, through us. Uh, all you have to do is go to www.lastherkin.com, stroke profiles and choose your favorite, not favorite, but yeah, favorite investor from the list, from the sector uh, who would like to connect and we are there gonna connect uh, you directly with them. So yeah, so that's that's my uh, closing remark for the day. Please, please, startups and founders, click on the pitch button under their profiles and you'll be able to connect with them directly. Uh, having said that, we are cutting 15 minutes out of uh, the uh, out of time, but that's okay. I think everybody is looking relaxed and, and, and I, ho I hope everybody has enjoyed the show as well. That brings us uh, to the end of the show. Uh, today's topic is on health tech and health is a big part of our life. So please, please stay safe, safe and stay healthy till we connect on a different session. Thank you so much and take care. Thank you.